The Stug, or Sturmgeschutz III. This was Germany's most produced tracked armored fighting vehicle of World War II. It was also one of its best. It's often overshadowed by the big cats, like the Tiger I, or Panther on film, but it does pop up in a few places, some historic masterpieces, and some not. Anyway, let's take a look at German tank destroyers and one of Germany's best armored vehicles. The Stug is what is considered an assault gun. Stumgeschutz literally translates to assault gun. Its original purpose was to support infantry with direct fire support. However, as the Stug would slowly evolve throughout the war, and once its gun was upgraded, it would become a successful tank destroyer. German heavily armored tank destroyers were called Jagdpanzer, which translates to hunting tank. Jagdpanzer were a crucial cost-saving vehicle for Germany during the second half of World War II, particularly on the Eastern Front, where the majority of tank engagements took place. Panzer Jäger were an even more cost-effective design. Germany had excellent anti-tank guns and a host of tanks not suited for later war combat. Vehicles like the Marder III took the chassis from an undergun Czech Panzer 38 and combined it with a Pac-40 anti-tank gun to create a cost-saving and effective tank destroyer. The turret doesn't move. It's like an elephant. There are some drawbacks for turretless armored vehicles, such as the need to guard their flanks, as their main guns have limited ability to quickly acquire targets beyond what is immediately in front of them. As such, they are less effective in open country, but thrive in towns and forests with predictable lines of attack. One of the best uses and movies to highlight the effectiveness of Stugs is Tal i Hantala, a Finnish movie which uses authentic Soviet and German armor. The Finnish were supplied with Stugs by Germany to fight their common Soviet enemy. Many Stugs still survive there today, as well as captured Russian armor. There were several advantages for tank destroyers having no turret. A single sloping piece of armor was stronger. Tank destroyers were lower to the ground, increasing stability while decreasing target size. Just check out the height difference between a Sherman and a Stug. Manufacturing was also significantly cheaper. Three Stugs could be manufactured for the cost of one Tiger with other tank destroyers such as the Jagdpanzer 38 being even more cost effective. Even advanced vehicles like the Panther were being turned into tank destroyers, shown here in Band of Brothers. The Jagdpanzer became one of the most formidable tank destroyers of the entire war. Including variants, over 11,000 Stug 3s and 1,100 Stug 4s were manufactured during the war. Stug 3s were built on Panzer III chassis, but in 1943, a Stug manufacturing plant was bombed by the RAF. Noting the growing importance of the Stug, Panzer IV chassis with their eight road wheels would be used to fill production gaps. These would become the Stug IV. Hitler himself approved of this use of resources to continue Stug production. Though Tali Ihantala is the best movie to see authentic Stug 3s, Band of Brothers is due credit for highlighting this common German vehicle. The reproduction used in the series is built on a British armoured personnel carrier, which is overall an excellent reproduction. The scene where the Stugs and other German armour engage with Shermans and retreat is not because they are inferior tanks at all. At the Battle of the Bloody Gulch, the German armour was heavily outnumbered. The scene with Henry Welsh and John McGrath knocking out a Stug with a bazooka was also a real occurrence and an amazing feat given the Stug's armor. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little brief on the Stug. As always, if you want to add anything, please do so in the comment section below, and we'll see you in the next video.